In Rebel Moon, set in a far-flung galaxy, or in a galaxy far, far away, you might want to say, we are introduced to Korra, an enigmatic figure with a mysterious past, as she finds herself on the remote moon of Velt, a place about to face the looming threat of a ruthless regime. This threat from an empire known as the Mother World signifies not only a physical threat, but also an ideological clash, pitting the oppressive might of a sprawling empire against the resilience of a smaller, defiant community. Korra emerges as a pivotal figure, becoming a symbol of resistance and hope for the moon's inhabitants as she goes in search of allies against the regime. The premise of Rebel Moon promises narrative rich in themes of rebellion, resilience and the fight for freedom against overwhelming odds. On paper this sounds like the makings of a classic sci-fi epic, but while ambitious in its visual scope, it quickly becomes clear Rebel Moon falls into the trap of cinematic appropriation. It chooses the cautious safety of the known instead of boldly going where no man has gone before making it, in my view, a derivative hodgepodge of sci-fi cliches and overdone tropes. The striking similarities in tone and themes with classics like Star Wars and Seven Samurai were obvious, and it even taps into history instead of attempting anything new in the world building. With clear parallels to Viking communities of the past, echoes of Nazi occupations and weaponry that closely resembles the iconic lightsaber. The film's settings, from a Korea-inspired cyberpunk city to gladiatorial arenas reminiscent of ancient Rome, represent a patchwork of sci-fi and historical staples that gave me a sense of deja vu, like I'd seen it all before. Read the story a thousand times. Thematically, the film also swings its overt messaging with a heavy hand, so that it feels like you're being bludgeoned with them, unable to find a unique story to deliver them in a subtle and nuanced way. However, the film isn't completely without merit. There are some standout performances, and in contrast to recent Star Wars installments, which I can't help but compare it to, Rebel Moon manages to tell a story coherently and maintains decent pacing, even if it falters into laziness. It sets up a good foundation in the first act, despite the cliches, however it becomes more muddled as it goes. It might have found more success, in my view, in attempting to explore new ways of telling a story of rebellion, instead of mirroring its predecessors. Instead, this risk-averse story fails to cast any new light on the age-old struggle between the oppressor and the oppressed, in a way that is invigorating and nuanced. Some viewers may find comfort in the familiar, which is great. I hope you enjoy it. But for those who are tired of endless reboots and remakes, and who are looking for the next step in the evolution of the sci-fi genre, for something groundbreaking, sorry to say this is not it. While homage can be a form of flattery, in Rebel Moon, the reliance on well-worn sci-fi tropes feel more like a crutch than a creative choice. The film's reliance on these makes it difficult to see it as anything more than a poor imitation of its predecessors. A discount Star Wars, a pale shadow of Seven Samurai. A good script should be the lifeblood of any film, but Rebel Moon's script is where it begins to falter most. The narrative feels overshadowed by a desire to showcase visual flair over a compelling story. The dialogue, often used for exposition, lacks the subtlety and depth needed to truly draw the viewer in to make them care about the characters, which brings us onto another major stumbling block. Despite the best efforts of the actors, the characters come across as infantile and one-dimensional, not just the villains, but the growing ensemble of heroes too. I struggle to connect or care about any of their journeys, which for a character-based story like this is irredeemable in my view. Characters join Korra's cause too readily, devoid of the natural conflict or hesitation we would expect in reality, the narrative suffers from overt exposition and lacks the subtlety required to build emotional climaxes, resulting in moments that fail to resonate. Character development is delivered through on-the-nose dialogue rather than shown experiences, particularly with Korra. Tertiary characters attempt to navigate moral complexities, but end up feeling underdeveloped and shoehorned in. The antagonists lack depth, reducing them to mere one-dimensional aggressors, while motives remain unclear and unexplored. Korra's character, while poised for a dramatic arc, appears to remain stagnant, a potential for growth eclipsed by an underwhelming script. 
Snyder is renowned for his visual storytelling and Rebel Moon is no exception. The CGI landscapes and the colour palette are indeed a feast for the eyes. However, as beautiful as these visuals are, they cannot compare for the narrative shortcomings. A film, especially in the sci-fi genre, or science fantasy genre, needs a solid story to anchor its visual achievements, otherwise it risks becoming a showcase for the effects, which is unfortunately what I think we have here. I had hoped this would be a groundbreaking sci-fi film, something that would jumpstart the industry's love of the genre, but groundbreaking it is not. It missed the mark in delivering a memorable and original sci-fi experience, and frankly I think sci-fi deserves better. Sci-fi should be about innovation and pushing boundaries. I'm not the greatest Star Wars fan, but even I recognise how groundbreaking it was at the time of its release. And with Snyder at the helm, the expectations were high. However, the film in my opinion feels like a glut of missed opportunities. But maybe I'm taking it all too seriously, maybe I just need to chill out and enjoy the ride, but with a few navigational adjustments it could have been so much more. For instance, deepening character development could have been achieved by giving Cora more moments of growth in the actual story, not just relying on her backstory, or exploring the motives of the people that gather to her, or why the antagonists act the way they do. In terms of plot progression, the narrative could have benefited from less predictability, introducing unexpected twists or complex moral dilemmas driven by the character's flaws or motivations. This might have added layers to the story, encouraging viewers to invest more deeply in the unfolding drama. Thematic exploration might have been enriched by delving into the grey areas of rebellion and resistance, such as the cost of war on the individual and societal psyche, or the personal sacrifices made for the greater good. Instead, the black and white narrative made it predictable and flat. In my view, these elements could have offered a more nuanced, thought-provoking experience. In essence, Rebel Moon might appeal to die-hard fans of the genre's established tropes, but for those seeking innovation in storytelling, it may feel like being hit repeatedly with the deja vu hammer. But what do you think? Do you agree? Or did you see something that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you're craving an extraordinary journey through realms unexplored, consider delving into universes directly out of my brain by checking out my sci-fi novels Black Milk and Delphine Descends. You can find more details in the description. Thanks for your support.